Now then, hello there, welcome back to Hive Swap Friend Sim. Let's be friends and all that stuff. <laughs> now, moving on to the second part of Volume 4 of Right and Wronged. Previously, we were wronged, but this time we shall take to the skies, presumably. Well, maybe, who knows. The other person does give off the, obviously, <laughs> the Wright brothers and all that jazz, the vibe. So let's see, fresh from your most recent bout of gratuitous bodily injury and touching scenes of camaraderie, you soldier on. You've had a few setbacks, made a couple of silly choices, but do you just keep, boy do things just keep happening? But let nobody say that you, the main character, are incapable of growth and change. You have made sure not to be caught in the wilderness near dawn again. You have made your way back to civilization. You can't wait to discover what new adventures await you. Adventures like friendship. With Vicare Ratit. Yes, the aviator. Moving on from the con man of the legal world to possibly a con man of the uh, engineering world. No, he's not going to be a con man. It's probably best for you to stop trying to predict what's going to happen to you at this point. Everything that's happened so far on this planet has been kind of chaotic. Uh, yes, obviously. In fact, you're ready for something more familiar. Well, lo and behold, a biplane. You head back to the site of your abandoned spaceship. Sure, it's smashed beyond repair, but it's a little slice of home. Maybe at least one or two pieces of it are fixable. You march off in what you think is the right direction. But when you get there, you're not alone. A little guy in a hat and big goggles is standing there, gazing at your spaceship. Maybe assessing it. As you watch, he breaks off a couple of gears and stuffs them in his pocket. Hey! You clear your throat loudly. Good galop and gravy! Wow, I've never seen the likes of you before! What strange wonders the heavens have rained down upon us today! You quickly lose any indignation you were building up. He's smiling at you, and his words seem at least somewhat amicable. Maybe you got this all wrong. Maybe this is the next person you're going to get chummy with. Well, obviously, you cut right to the chase. No point in beating around the ground a leaf covering. That's probably what they call it on this planet. You let this guy know you're the proprietor of the spaceship he's stripping, and you're in mighty need of a new friend. A friend, eh? A bosom companion? A pal about town? I've seen nary a townman, thickest or harriers uh, around these parts who might fit the bill. You're kind of trying to imply that this guy could be your friend. Is it too late to say that now? You try to imply your eyebrows? Oh, we have eyebrows. I didn't notice that. As for me, day-to-day -day matters here on attorney interest me not. For I care only about hurtling at great speeds through this boundless expanse of the cosmos. That's right. Space. It is space light that consumes my every waking thought and all my ardor. As in accordance with my duty as a future Alternian Crusader, of course. No oxygen, no wind, a total vacuum. That is the life for me, all right. Flying in space, above the atmosphere, not within the realm of gravity's purview. Wouldn't have it any other way. Right, you get the feeling you're missing something. This guy seems really defensive about his interest in spaceflight. Like, maybe he's trying to say something totally different? <laughs> well, whatever it is, his internal conflict clearly takes precedence over your issues. He seems like a great candidate for a friend despite the fact that his voice sounds like it belongs over a newsreel about World War II. I have just one query for you, sport, if I may be so bold. Do you also like space flight? Do you yearn to see the moon shining above, the clouds moving by as you chase and tease the impish western wind, and then also keep going past that up into space? Tell him you love space flight. Absolutely we love space flight. Well then, we are in total agreement. Two kindred souls traveling hand in hand in a to a glorious yet inevitable future of a conscripted service in space. Which is, as I've already made clear, a thing I most definitely and positively desire. So it seems we have nothing more to discuss. Toodaloo. Oh. Okay, toodaloo. Huh. Interesting. Alright, I am just as confused as the... We don't have eyebrows. Why did you say... You don't have eyebrows, mate. I, I, I can't. I, I can't understand that. Anyway, 
Apparently, apparently we're not in space flight. I guess. Okay, weird, strange, but okay, we're not. I mean, I guess we did crash, so it didn't work out so well. His eyes widen. You see them. Sparkle. Ah, I see. You're an individual with more sophisticated part. A real connoisseur of the bouillant arts. You are. Someone like you could never be satisfied with the anemic affair of traveling through the inky blackness of the galaxies. I believe a jump to my hive is in order. Let's get the wiggle on. Uh, there was a lot of going on there, but you understand that he wants you to follow him. The friendly guy takes you to a building where all of the grooms seem to be balanced on spindly looking stilts. The hive soars above you up into the sky. He gestures to a little platform attached to a pulley system, like a rudimentary elevator. It brings you up into a small, dark room. His house is pretty much what you would have guessed. The walls are covered in star maps and pictures of spaceships. He notes that many of them have cheery slogans splashed across them, saying things like, Explore the galaxies because you're required, required to fulfill your duty to society, and enlist, travel, make friends, don't get cold. Your new friend doesn't seem too happy as he looks around the place. Just a hive for a delicate spacecraft enthusiast, isn't it? Uh, you nod. You're not sure what this is leading to, but no one ever went wrong relying on non-specific and plausibly deniable agreement. <laughs> Who am I fooling? You've rumbled me, potential new chum. What you see before you is a collage of falsehoods. I'm nothing but an avatar of baloney. In truth, the myriad temptations and desires of space do nothing to tickle my biscuit. The thought of participating in the glorious eternal conquest gives me the screaming mimis. My interest lies in something a little lower down. He reaches up and peels back one of the posters. Behind it is another poster, this one showing a view of clouds in the night sky. Behold, my shame. The truth is, I long to toss and turn within the grasp of Mr. Gravity's sweet fingers. To traverse the sky, can such a thing be? Imagine flying with the confines of Altenia's very atmosphere, defying the very conventions of what we all know to be true. Instead of down, up, instead of falling, soaring. Can you imagine? Can you see it before you? Could you even dream of the existence of a, such a flying machine? Wait, so they have spaceships but not airplanes. Uh, okay. Uh, I mean... Airplanes exist? <laughs> I brought you here to show you my truth. And you treat me to mockery. But an airplane? A plane that floats in the air? Flying machines are a serious business. I think you should leave. Game over. Okay. I'm confused as... Okay. I guess... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I made it through Tagore without issue, without single failure state. I guess I'm more in line with my con man than I am with a crazy airplane enthusiast. Okay. Anyway, fine, I guess. Not sure about space flight. And um, we've never heard of such a thing as a airplane. Ah, but the future is ours to build, my strange youth and unhorned comrade. What do you think? Does it excite ya? Do my ideas rattle your buttons? Uh, you can't help but notice that he's referred to him, you as chum and comrade, but friend hasn't made an appearance yet. Do synonyms count? Or is it just a tick of his speaking style? You look as earnest as you can and nod vigorously. You're almost positive this is the thing he really wants you to express interest in. Ah, the truth will out. You and I share this furtive passion for the indulgences of the air. A dialogue between a troll, a flying machine, and the stars. But further away from the stars than we would be in a spaceship. I can't stress enough how different of a thing this is. Uh, you can't decide between nodding and shaking your head here, so you furrow your brow and do your best to look thoughtful. Like maybe you are contemplating the differences. This fellow's demeanor towards you is definitely shading to the more temperate climate zones. However, certain physical needs are starting to assert themselves. Uh, you're still pretty banged up from your previous adventures, but right now the aching of your stomach is screaming for attention. 
uh, you humbly ask your friend to be if there might be any chance of getting a bite to eat. But of course! Why, if I'd known you had a rumbling in the old digestion bladder, I would have shut my yapper too sweet. Time for a good old nosh, a yamaruni. What ho! Now, how should we obtain the victuals? We could venture into the great unknown, which is to say, out of my hive. Or we could stay here, beholden to what our twists and turns Lady Fate has in store for us in the nutrition block. What say you, Newtimer? Okay, this one I have no idea. Ah, ah. I mean, adventure awaits us in the outside world. I mean, my first instincts have always been wrong for this guy, apparently. So let's go stay in the hive. Fuck it. Uh, you tell him any food he has in the house will be fine. Surely staying here will get you fed more quickly. No problem at all, my fine and fervent fellow. However, I believe two kindred sausages ourselves have more ways of communicating than mere words alone. I think I'm grasping meaning behind your request. The signal from your transmitter is pinging my cranial orb's receiver. I can see what you're throwing after is food for the soul. Fuck. Uh, you definitely, definitely meant food for the body. You look for an opening where you might gently correct your new buddy, but he seems to be working himself up to say a lot more things. The delectable nutrition of what a troll's truest being craves. The substance of thought, of imagination, of desire. That which nourishes the self better than the finest grub noodles. Art, passion, science. You must have an anchoring to see my flying machine design sketches. Uh, despite your troubles, you can't help but think his enthusiasm is, enthusiasm is kind of sweet. Uh, you nod weakly. You make one last attempt, indicating that food might strengthen you to fully appreciate his words. No need to worry. I am fully confident your ability to take in the, my glorious blueprints. You have shown yourself to have quite the sturdy noggin and a discerning gander good bulb. I would welcome your input. Warmth blooms in your stomach. It feels nice to hear him compliment you. You're not sure what you've actually done to earn his praise, but you definitely don't want to ruin his this now. Maybe seeing his designs will be fun, even on an empty stomach. Maybe it really will nourish you on a level that will help you forget about the prosaic, earthly nourishment you thought you wanted. You tell him, you're in. Not so fast. That which I am planning to reveal to you is what I keep closest to my torso pillar. It's not that I don't trust you, my footloose and horn-free cohort, but I think I would like to trust you a little more before vivisecting myself and displaying my bleeding organs before your penetrating gaze, which is a metaphor for exposing my portfolio. Might I trouble you to participate in a small trust trial? Uh, no problem, you tell him. Your bud insight insists you make for yourself comfortable while you, he gets a few supplies. After a few minutes, he returns with a fistful of fabrics in different colors. Here's what's been bouncing all around the old brain box of mine, buddy Oh, I'm going to tie this blindfold around your face, then I'm going to give you some instructions. And you're going to try to look at the case where I keep my treasured sketches. If you can find it, it's got to mean we trust each other deeply. Like two wings working in unison to achieve liftoff. If that's how wings work. I'm still figuring out the principles of the matter. What a romp. Are you up for it? It's too late to back, turn back now. And really, you don't want to. It's kind of a relief to have him tell you what you can do to earn his friendship in plain terms. Well, as plain as this guy's terms ever get. You give him a thumbs up. Now we're on the trolley. Sure. He quickly ties the fabric around your face. The time is upon us. Time for the inaugural flight of our deepening bond. Time to nudge our fledging companionship out of the nest and see what happens. New friend starts to direct you around the room. To the left. No, my left. Okay, sorry, okay, I meant your left. And now onwards to the glorious future that lies before us. Uh, you smile weakly, doing your best to follow his instructions. He sounds happy, so you, you might must be getting somewhere. Almost the doorway. Three steps forward if you'll be so... Wait! Crash. You stagger backwards from the impact. You hear yourself wheeze. The shock has totally knocked your lungs out of commission. Your chest jerks in tiny contractions as you gasp for air. Oh beans! Ding dang darn it! There's no pain. Just an intense pressure focused on the center of your face. Right around where you ran into something face first. You pull at the blindfold and you hear footsteps. Which probably means your new friend is rushing out to help. He gets the blindfold untied and his face swims into your vision. He looks utterly gobsmacked. 
Why I'll be a horned beast scrub food? Everything copper kit. Copper. Copacetic, no pal? You put your hand to your face and touch something wet. Sure enough, when you pull your fingers away, they're covered in blood. Your nose isn't gashing or anything, just sending out a couple of rivulets to let you know it's having a bad day. It's not so bad. You tell your acquaintance this, but he doesn't look any less horrified. Shivering Stratakulmilai! All this time I've been testing you to see if I could place the tender gift of trust in your declawed little hands. And here you've bestowed upon me the greatest trust of all. Knowledge of non-standard hematological attributes. I am truly honored, flabbergasted, absolutely pushed to the brink of rationality by such a display of faith. Never mind the trust trial, you deserve to see my sketches. Just wait here. Be back in two shakes of our baby's bee best bee beasts, bar beast, hindquarters. You sit down on the floor again, wiping the blood off your face. You're not going to question the stroke of luck you've been shown. Why, if you knew bleeding was the key to this affection all along, uh, you could have encouraged some blood from the sites of your multiple injuries. But no matter, you sniff the last of the blood back up into your nostrils, tasting metal at the back of your throat. When, you almost f when your almost friend returns, he drops a big stack of papers onto your lap. You page through the designs. The first few are, are rudimentary, mostly variations on, on spaceships with little notes like how to make it not reach its escape velocity and less jet fuel, shape could be less aerodynamic. But as you keep going, the designs get pretty interesting. One seems to rely on some big rotating sails to achieve lift. Another shows a light frame body attached to four jointed wings. Okay, so it's Da Vinci's sketches and stuff like that. You briefly wonder what he plans to make the wings out of before you see the note stating that these are dragon wings. Okay, a follow-up scribble states, Flapping mechanism, how to soften the rigor mortis. <laughs> okay. But hang on, you take a closer look at the machine's frame. This guy's sketch is pretty detailed. The frame doesn't seem to be made of wood or aluminium, as you'd expected, but smaller. Individual shapes lashed together with some kind of cord. Oh, well, we're in Alternia, so uh, maybe it's just macabre aesthetic, but you think it looks like bones. I mean, yeah, it's the most readily available material, corpses. You look back at the other designs. Now that you look at the sails in this one, have a texture that might be leather or similar, such as skin. The sketches themselves are picked out in a variety of colors. Not dissimilar from some of the brand new blood colors you've discovered lately. Oh boy. You've been down this creepy alien road before. Using your lightest, most jocular tone, you question the bone shapes. You soften your words with a big, not freaked out smile. What's that? Well, I'm not a construction professional, you know. Can't make use of what's available. Only curled all bloods and grubs, of course. Not an ounce of insurrectional spirit in this fellow over here. Fear not, unhorn one. Ah, these wacky cultural differences. You just misunderstood. You take refuge in your old standby of nodding and smiling. It's none of your business what body parts this fella uses or doesn't use to make his right brother's transformative fan works. Friends aren't for judging people's use of corpses and construction materials anyway. <laughs> you know, when you crash landed on my planet, I had no idea what to think. Vicar, old boy, you've really shot the balls now. That's what I told myself. Telling an alien about your flying dreams? That's ruffled the kitty and no doubt about it. But now you that we're here and you're having a looky-loo at my sketches, I'm thinking it might have been the right for us to meet all along. Perhaps the work of the compressious Madame Destiny. Surely he's about to say that you're friends. You can almost taste those sweet, friendship-affirming syllables coming from his mouth. You're just seconds away from that coveted F-word. Or are you? Maybe you've misconstrued everything. You look back down at the sketches. Bones in this one, bones in that one. He says these plants call for the bones of aliens like him. At least if you understood him correctly. Mm. But they don't really look that different from... Well, the bones you're more familiar with. Your own bones. Your bones, which have already gone through a lot today. And maybe seem to be in kind of a harvestable condition? If one was so inclined. You clear your throat, <laughs> you say, he's not, um, he's not in the market for these materials right now, is he? Like, 
right, right now? The friendly guy doesn't understand your question. You're not going to push it. But you do risk a quick glance at yourself, then back at him, then back at yourself. Just to see if he's checking out the stuff, so to speak. Uh, when you look back at him, he looks aghast. Uh, oops. Heavens to biscuits! Is that what you think of me? You think I'm the type to start taking people's body parts out heal the pickle tea? As if there aren't plenty of thoughtlessly discarded trip cages to work with. If that's the type of gent you're looking for in these parts, I'm afraid I'm not the type of aggressive heartthrob you're after. We can't all be the ma macho, bloodthirsty, romantic hero type. Ready to whip out our organ harvesting tools at a moment's notice. I thought we could be friends, but now I see you're looking for something different. My apologies. I think... I think it's best if you go elsewhere. You want to correct the misunderstanding, but you're not fully sure what the misunderstanding is. This guy doesn't seem to be in any mood for friendship right now. You hang your head. Looks like this was all just a big waste of time. Misunderstood. Huh. Well, that's no good. No, 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 no. <laughs> I literally made all the wrong choices, apparently. Okay. I got it. We're not in the space flight. No, no, no. Mm, I've never heard of such a thing. I guess let's just... I guess let's go out and look for food instead, then. <laughs> <laughs> From your budding chum's words, it sounds like he himself isn't sure if there's any food in the house. Best to risk it and go outside. You tell him your decision. Top choice, Bakru. Foraging is how I while away most of my time after all. There's just one small matter to trouble the old brain power. If we're wrenching out into the unknown yonder, we should obtain some chow for my Lucius as well. Uh, he'll be a real grumpy Gustav if he goes too long without his nosh. You draw yourself up, you draw yourself up proudly. It's taken a lot of bizarre run-ins and in harrowing close shaves, but you know all about Lucis's. You inquire about loose stuff, was it? Oh, oh, what a card you are. No, my Lucis. I call him the Canary. He whips out a photo. It shows a smaller version of himself. His horns nothing but stubs, a far too big pair of aviator goggles slipping off his nose. Standing behind him is a large white fowl. Big scruggly wings folded back against its body. You want to say an emu? Whatever it is, it's definitely not a canary. Its beak touches the top of your pal's head with something that might count as affection. He's not a persnickety sort. All kinds of bugs and leaves will tickle his fancy. Shall we away? Shall we greet the horizon that rushes forward to meet us with astounding grace? Shall we give ourselves over to the current of time's great river? I'm sure you tell him. You can leave the house. It's getting a lot easier to pay attention to only the words this guy says that actually make sense. You kind of enjoy his way of speaking though. If nothing else, it gives you the feeling that he's really excited about this, this food quest you're going on together. I do like voice to give like this. It's fun as well. Your alien pal leads you back down through the pulley system and outside again. The trip is not so easy on your bruised ribs. The thing about walking is, when you walk, your body moves. You've had better times, is all you're saying. You indicate as much to your companion. Oh boy, I hear ya. Moving while attached to alternative surface is the worst kind of hooey. The moment when Automatus Autonomous Flight has invented the terminals ever closer to the present. Can you hear it approach? The wail of a distant klaxon. The call to adventure. It beckons us forward through the years. A golden thread stretching even the one onward to that glorious inevitability. Uh, that's not what he meant. But his excitement cheers you up a little. Maybe you'll feel better in the future, when someone invents a flight on this planet. Certainly by that time, either you'll... Uh, either you'll be further along in your healing, or dead. Either way, thinking about that future brings a little rosy glow to your heart. You ask your buddy where you're going next. The world is our bivavular secreter. We'll go wherever the wind calls our names. Great. But if it's a short-term answer you're inquiring after, there's a specific plant that canary likes to eat. It's got white petals and leaves as red as a troll's most lurid desires. Could you give a whole elf your bulbs fall on something or that of that persuasion? Uh, you agree to keep an eye out. You continue trudging along beside him, wincing whenever your steps jolt your injuries. Maybe a little conversation will help distract you. You ask your new friend what got him so interested in flying in the first place. 
What could be better? Up there, free of worldly concerns. The wind in your face and the horizon at your back. Seeing the continent spread below you. Finally feeling that your personal aesthetic is appropriate for the given circumstances. Huh. You chew over this one for a minute or two. It seems like what really makes this guy tick is the travel and adventure thing. Or maybe that's just what you're getting from his general demeanor. And pretty much everything is set up to until now. You're nervous to bring up anything that might make him dislike you. But in the interest of bonding, you'll forge ahead. Aren't there, you say with apprehension, maybe some similarities being flying in space travel? Like maybe being a spaceship could satisfy some of those urges. What? There may be some superficial similarities to trick the common troll, but in essence, the blood pusher and soul of each are as different as night and day, as a mountain and a ditch, a star and a mud puddle. Don't get a fellow wrong, space travel is fine. Well, it's the only way to satisfy bloodthirsty and nearly immortal overlords, and I look forward to such a time when I can be of the service in the eternal Muslim grind of intergalactic conquest. But it's missing the punch, the pizzazz. The kaboom! The trunk beast's honk of it all! Just as you'd feared, you stepped in it now. You're struggling for a response when out of the corner of your eye you spot a cluster of white flowers. Relieved, you point them out to your companion, who races over to gather them. But when he holds one up, you can see it has blue leaves, not a red. Your shoulders droop. Seems like all you're doing is disappointing your buddy, who has been so nice to you. Or at least that's what you think you're read between the lines of his confusing speaking style. Fear not my smooth-headed compatriot. These are not the loosest Russians we sought, but this plant is people chow. What I mean to say is we can eat it. Since we are people, it's food for people, not food made of people. Uh, to be clear. <laughs> uh, that is actually good clarification. We do need those kind of clarifications. He comes back with a fistful of the flowers and hands you one of the blue leaves. You're not at all sure that food that's safe for your buddy will be the safe for you as well, but at this point you don't have much to lose. Besides, with the way your stomach is groaning, it might as well be a perfectly seared steak. You put it in your mouth. Chewing on a leaf, you feel even more affection towards this guy than before. You were worried this trip was just turning into an excuse for him to run some kind of household errand, but he really did find you something to eat. You are desperate to find some way to show him that you understand his interests. You want to connect to him on a deep soul level. Anything to get him to look at you with that treasured glow of friendship in his eyes. Whenever he mentions space style, he talks about how it's something that he has to do. Some kind of necessary obligation. So maybe there's a reason he's fixated on an activity that is kind of similar but just a little different. Maybe he doesn't want to do the required thing, the space conquests but doesn't have it in him to rebel entirely all the way. Maybe airplane flight, or whatever similar thing he is envisioning, is a compromise between that what he has to do and what he wants to do. A balance, like all must find, in order to live as an individual in a society that shapes one's desires from birth. You cautiously open your mouth, heart pounding. You venture to ask your pal if he, well, if he maybe would rather not satisfy the demands of the bloodthirsty overlords? If maybe a part of him wants to get into the, his flying machine and, well, leave? For real? That's... He seems taken aback. Maybe you should never have said it. What a huge mistake. You've probably pushed this friendship out of your reach for good now. Panicking, you point to the side, yelling that you see a big field of white flowers in that direction. Your potential friend leaps to action, seemingly also glad to be given a reason not to answer this question. He races forward in the direction you indicated. In a matter of seconds, there's a yelp and your new acquaintance vanishes. Instantly, you realize your error. You didn't look where you were pointing. While walking, you unwittingly came close to the edge of the large cliff, which your companion has now disappeared over. You race to the side, your stomach flooding with fear. This is absolutely the opposite of what you wanted. You look down in horror. Your friend now looks approximately how you felt when you first crash land on this dark planet. He's conscious, his face frozen in shock, but one leg is twisted underneath him in a nasty way. You may not be familiar with his alien anatomy, but you're almost positive that it shouldn't look like that. You call out to him in distress. Sure, he's going to castigate you for your mistake. The strangeness of his language won't make it hurt any less to lose this guy's trust forever. What ho! Kalu! Kalei! His voice floats up from the ground below, 
weak but somewhat jovial. Is it possible he's not angry? Oh, joy is happening! Oh, delight for the body and spirit! Did you see? Did you being absorbed what occurred before your very visit? Ah, he flew for a second. <laughs> That's why. I flew! Of course he fucking did. God damn it! <laughs> for fuck's sake. You just fell, dude. <laughs> oh well, it makes him happy. Soared through the air. Just for a moment, but it happened. An ecstasy like none I've ever known. Ah, uh, you hesitate. Is it really possible that he could be taking this so well? That maybe your big fuck-up was a step in the right direction after all? I mean, after three other fuck-ups. It's definitely a little worrying to hear him celebrate a dangerous fall, but none of that matters if you can secure his friendship at least. My strange associate! Come on down here! We'll celebrate in grand fashion this eve! How'd you know that a brief sojourn through unfettered air would bring me such joy? You're a fine fellow, and truly, a truly superb friend. Your heart lifts with joy, he said it! Of course, you know how to find some way to climb down a cliff with your messed up ribs, not to mention figuring out how to transport someone with a broken leg back to the house. You're not really sure if that's possible, or when the adrenaline that's got you this far will give out and force you to succumb to your own pain. But with a night full of difficulties ahead of you, you couldn't ask for a better bomb than knowing you'll face in them hand in hand with your friend. Assuming he didn't hurt his hands as well. Uh, no matter, you did it! Uh, victory! Uh, terms and conditions apply. Um, well, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I, guess he, I guess he's happy. I guess he's happy. And... <laughs> Okay, well, he's happy. <laughs> he's happy, we're happy, everyone's happy. Let's, uh, bye! Let's just leave the scene of the accident. Don't want any of those murder drones doing anything. Bye, now, for real. Goodbye.